investigating with scientific method how things in Minecraft work. Uh, and I also like blowing off people, so. I the worlds I have somewhere in there, you will die. <laughs> All right, you ready? All right, so we're gonna start with questions by raising your hand. Uh, can you turn on the projector of your Zenos? There are no Zenos. But could you do? Can you do what? Can I hook up YouTube yeah. and show yeah. it? Yeah. Can you do what? 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 <laughs> okay, nice. How many of you are mediocre, kind of know some things about it? Nice, awesome. How many of you are in the advanced stage? Obviously the rest of you. Very cool. Okay, cool. Very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and get some questions. You back there. things in the game happen. Minecarts move and uh, a lot of things update, but there's also every tenth of a second there's a redstone tick, and that is when redstone repeaters and redstone torches update. So it's actually a much more complex topic than even that, um, but it depends on which part of the world you're talking about and how often the ticks are. And then on top of that, uh, the game will slow down sometimes. On your PC or especially on multiplayer servers, the tick rate that's, that's the fastest tick rate, but if the server is particularly loaded, that tick rate will slow down and it'll take longer for each tick. I'm making a clock 
And um, I'm using so many repeaters, I was wondering if there's any way to cut down the number of repeaters. So the question was uh, making a clock and how to cut down on the large number of repeaters. Um, so you would need to have a cycle of repeaters and then something that counts how many of those cycles have occurred. Um, although that kind of system is not going to keep very reliable time. If you want to keep accurate time compared to a clock, uh, as in a clock in the real world, uh, that's not going to work particularly well because of things like ticks slowing down. Um, but if you can do something, if, you, if that doesn't matter, then you can go ahead and use loops of redstone. That, so each time one loop of uh, repeaters cycles around, you have another a, a counter move up one. That's the way that you can reduce the number of repeaters. Uh, and if you want to keep track of time within the game, for instance, day or night, you can use things like uh, buds or uh, block update detectors that will detect when it's daylight out so that you can sort of, because the clock may drift away from the actual time, you can use that to reset your clock and get it back to an accurate time every day. Next question. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys for all the stuff you put up. It's really helpful. And question for all of you, I don't know if you want to do this, but how did you guys learn about Redstone and figure it out? Because a lot of Minecraft is figuring out what the hell is this thing doing, right? And you went out and explained to the rest of us. So how did you figure that out? <coughs> the wiki. The wiki. It was the wiki. I never really had any experience on any of it. And uh, when I found the wiki, matter of fact, when I started playing the game, the game was cool. And when I stumbled upon redstone, and I was like, well, what is this? And someone's like, oh, you can make circuits. And I was like, really? And then I went to the wiki, and I go, wow. And so that's what I learned from the wiki, my uh, For me, quickly, it was I knew about it. People had told me about it before I even started playing Minecraft. And when I started playing, I didn't look at it for a while, because I knew it was going to be really involved. It was going to take up a lot of my free time. Uh, and then I used the wiki and realized I didn't quite understand it. And that's when I started making the learning tools that I built. That was for me to learn. The world of Redstone is literally how I learned and, and investigated Redstone. Um, yeah, so I, I started out uh, basically learning from the wiki. Uh, but soon I got tired of switching back and forth and I, I wanted to try it out for myself. So I started trying to engineer all the circuits. My own, but uh, I'm also I also have a degree in computer science, so that <laughs> helps. It's, it doesn't directly. We don't we don't have a redstone class in college, but <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, but actually, just just trying a lot of stuff on my own was how I figured out uh, figured out how it works. Just applying the scientific method to the way that redstone works, and and just all went from there. Uh, I started by my redstone creations by just to finding out like different things, and then I uh, figured out that there are two states to redstone on and off, just like binary. And I did trial and error with some different states that I tried myself, and I figured out I can make different stuff like elevators, and elevators, and things like that. Uh, yeah, I pretty much learned with the wiki. That, that's the best resource. And um, if you really want to go in depth, uh, you can take logic circuit uh, classes. That's uh, maybe university stuff, but it, it's the same way uh, Redstone works. And uh, also just experiment with it. Just start playing Redstone and it's going to come naturally to you. You're going to learn by using it, not, not otherwise. Next question. Let me stand. You, right there. Yep. You. Um, I'm where did you guys get your inspiration? Inspiration? For wanting to create cool things? I, I mean, me, I like to just make like, really neat traps. Or I, have a, I have a series where I have a zombie fortress, and it's this gigantic mountain that's being hollowed out. And if you push some buttons, it took the two flip flops, and if you push some buttons, it reveals this whole entire fortress. That was my inspiration, just having fun and making cool stuff. Yeah. 
Um, I actually got a lot of my inspiration from Patty Ryder. Because <laughs> 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 the way he approached everything the science, I like that. Um, for my games, it was actually a lot of other YouTubers and a lot of games I had seen. And I thought I could I could do that for myself. I had some ideas and it really worked. And so I got my inspiration from that. I got my inspiration from Captain Sparkles. I was looking at how he made all these different team canyons and his awesome other stuff. Uh, much of my ideas initially came from the uh, Minecraft forums. At the, at the very first um, a couple months of that, it was a really, really good uh, forum and a lot of good ideas, people experimenting, finding stuff, and it's a really good resource to uh, learn about the game and have ideas that uh, where you would make uh, funny machines or interesting stuff. And uh, for me, uh, I, you know, a lot of the same things, seeing what other people made, but for me in particular, I like to look at some things that exist out there, and then when I try them out, I find out they're actually really difficult for a player to use. A, a minecart station where you have to know to go over here, press this button, throw this lever, and put the card here. And so I've always wanted to make things that are more usable, uh, that are easier for the player, and that makes things, that introduces a new challenge, and those challenges are where I find some inspiration. Next question. Um, I created a, a death trap sort of thing on my server with uh, repeaters or dispensers. And I needed a way to connect all four sides to one lever. But when I try, it just dissipates. Or when I add repeaters, it just delays everything. What should I do? <laughs> yeah, probably um, your basic idea is just uh, your circuit is not, um, you probably can do it in another way, a simpler way. Like uh, if you have your four branch, you can probably expand the circuit and uh, it, it's going to be bigger, but uh, you're, you're going to have to make it bigger. Okay, next question. This is a question about video games. Um, well, first of all, like two-part question, I guess. Did uh, the, the Frogger one, that I think it was in Digital Diamonds recently, was that you? Or? Oh, okay. But yeah, my question is, um, when you're going to design a user interface, like, like with the Frogger game, the actual player jumps around, or if, you know, other games you have to push buttons, like what's your strategy for designing the user interface and display? Yeah, that's tricky. It's, when you have a bunch of redstone, it, it can get hard because you have you have to. It takes up a lot of space, and sometimes there's limits to how you can connect things. And you add too much delay by making redstone go all the way around. Um, <clears throat> generally, I I like to involve. Um, well, it depends on the game, obviously. But like for something like Angry Birds, I just have a single button there and press it and. Uh, and then that connects underground. I use a lot of underground wiring, uh, and actually in a lot of my games, there's a lot of underground wiring. And, uh, and in fact, in that one, I even used uh, instant wire because the button was so far away from the, the mechanism, and, you, and there was a lot of timing involved. So you had the uh, I used instant wire to get the signal there as quickly as possible, so that it would uh, so that it would still like the timing would be preserved. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of it can be tricky to, to hide a lot of the wiring. Um, sometimes having walls around around everything that the player doesn't need to be able to see helps so that you can hide the wiring around the sides. Um, and actually, sometimes I've just there have been games where I've I've said I want to do this game, but I really can't hide the wiring and. I've actually, I've, I've just not just left them any more to one. Um, and, and actually sometimes, uh, once or twice I've, I've done that, and then later I've said, oh, well, I can use this that I saw in somebody else's video or, or whatever, and, and come back to it. So, I don't know, hopefully that helped. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. 
How do you tackle like a large redstone project? Like how do you go into it? Because I tried and like eventually they or they'll like open up you. Lots of time and patience. That's what I would say. I mean, it, it's 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 crazy. You know, when you get in there, like I have uh, one thing that I did was uh, three strikes in your house. It was a uh, it was a you had a combination that you had to enter in, and you had three tries to enter that combination in. And if you didn't get it within the third try, the door opened up underneath you and you fell in the lava. But it had a it had a safety switch too, where if you got the combination within two, it would reset and it would open the door. The wiring for these things are. And maybe, like what he, what he was just saying, like, you know, you start digging through walls, and next thing you know, you're digging through a wall, and oh, great, there's my wiring for my stairs. And it's like, how do I get around that? It, it just takes a lot of time and patience. That's what I would have to say. Uh, for my large projects, I always try to break them down. I would, um, I, for instance, my minecart station, uh, I broke it down into where the player arrives, where the player gets into the system, the switch yard, the Pez dispenser for getting cards. And I would tackle each of those projects separately. I would carve out a space and say, okay, I need to fit it in this approximate space. And I would get that pretty much completely working, just say, okay, it's gonna, the, the card's gonna come out here and start out with nothing. And because if I don't break the project down into smaller and smaller pieces, I'll never get it done. I'll just be running around, rearranging everything. And it, with it broken down like that, if I find out, okay, I actually need to make a little more room for this part of the project, I don't have to move everything, I just have to move the one separation between two different components. So, and that comes out of practice and just making a lot of projects. The more moves you make, the more you'll get a feel for how to break down your larger projects. See, I'm learning things too. I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> okay, next question. Uh, somebody way back there. You way back there. Yep. Um, how do the lock update detection devices work? I've always been very curious about the theory behind that. Okay. Uh, lock update detectors, there's a few different types you can make. But well, one, you have to have a power source that's at least diagonal to the piston you have. And, and uh, you. The best ones I have made is I have to place a torch and then uh, block the wall, block the wall, redstone in the middle, and a heater, and then I have a regular block, and then I have a piston down here. And then when you piss block right next to the uh, right next to the piston, it'll extend, and I needed a way to attract it if the block went away, so I added a a uh, torch here and then it appears so that when the block uh, updated, or the piston updated, it would go around and turn on the torch, that way you destroy the uh, piston, the block, and it would attract. It's magic. Nah, that's it. <laughs> I, let, me just, let me just talk at a general level how they work. Um, so, the basic idea is there, there are certain ways to power a piston that will not actually cause the, the piston to say, hey, I'm being powered now. I should change states, I should extend or retract. And so one of those ways is to provide a diagonal power source to this, and there's, there's some others. The idea is that a piston is in the incorrect state. It's, it's either being powered and it's not extended, or it's not being powered and it is extended. And whenever anything updates nearby, that's gonna cause the piston to say, oh, I'm in the wrong state and it's going to correct itself. And so you can use, you can take advantage of that uh, for the block of detecting. Next question. Uh, how do you guys feel about mod, like the mini blocks mods for space? I think there's, there's different attitudes towards different mods like that. Um, some people love to get all these mods uh, and try them out and explore new aspects of the game. For me personally, I have to avoid mods because I want to make a YouTube channel that is accessible to everyone, and the only thing that's accessible to everyone is the vanilla game. So, but another part of it is I don't like to make, I don't like to use mods that make the game a lot easier because, as I said earlier, one of my inspirations is a challenge. If I have a um, wireless redstone mod, for instance, I don't have to make any wiring, I don't have to solve certain problems. Um, it, 
actually takes away from the game. Uh, so I, I look for those challenges, uh, and many of the mods that I've seen related to Redstone simply make it simpler. And you could have a mod that you plunk it down, and there's an entire computer or an entire you know minecart control station or whatever. And the mod could do that for you, but what would be the point? One of the things I love about Redstone is you build it and you actually see it. Inside everyone's computer, there's that same kind of circuitry, but you can't see it. It's trapped, in, it's you know, microscopic and trapped inside a little piece of silicon and plastic. But Redstone, you can actually see it all. So uh, I don't like a lot of the Redstone mods for that reason as well. They tend to hide what really makes it interesting to see. Pretty much handed. Oh, let's see. <coughs> Um, are there any features you guys would like to see come to the Redstone system? <laughs> um, I really love that opening a chest trigger a block update on, the, on every side so that we could trap people that come to your chest. <laughs> that would be best. You want more ways to kill people. <laughs> yeah, why else would you play Minecraft? Huh? <laughs> I, I gotta say, I actually sort of enjoy the process that, that Mojang goes through to add stuff, which is they just add whatever they want. <laughs> uh, I, I think, like, I never would have thought to put pistons into the game. That was obviously based on a mod, but uh, there's just all kinds of weird stuff they put into the game that I, I, I wouldn't think belongs into a normal game, but, but they put it in and, and it slimes and all, all these, yeah. And so I, I actually really enjoy playing around with all these weird things that I never would have thought of. And uh, we did, Seth and I talked to Jens yesterday and asked him if there's anything new that he's planning on adding to Minecraft and uh, related to Redstone. And he kind of waffled, he talked about one thing that they thought about like, a year ago adding to the game and decided not to. And so it seems like they don't really have many plans to make any significant changes to Redstone at this point. Next question. You, sir. No. Um, I know there's no concept of magnetism today. There's stones and metals. Can you wrap redstone around a piece of iron and make it electrical? <laughs> no, you can't, but that would be a fascinating thing. <laughs> <laughs> can I answer that? Can I So I, I like to do things that, that with redstone that don't necessarily um, that, well, they don't necessarily just use redstone, right? That's that's what I really love. So you say there's no concept of magnetism, but Turns out that if you have a wolf and a sheep, and they're separated by a wall, and you move the sheep, the wolf's going to follow. So there are, I, I, I've made a couple of videos about this, uh, but there are actually creative ways to do stuff like that, that, that you just have to be, think a little bit outside the box. So if you put that sheep in a minecart, you can control the sheep, and you can hide that behind a wall. I've actually had, you know, the wolf as a player avatar for, for a game. So you just got to think a little bit outside the box, but Redstone interacts with everything in the game. And so you can actually sometimes do stuff like that. Next question. You may not know. Yep. two pistons to extend two blocks, um, you know, one piston pushing another piston, things start getting really complicated. And to, an, to a certain point, you can't prevent some of that bulk and some of that complexity. Um, you can extend them pretty easily, but retracting them gets more difficult. You, you go to three pistons in a row, it's really difficult. Um, everything that I've ever built in the world of Redstone, a lot of people have looked at, and many times I'll see people optimize them. They find smaller circuits, smaller ways of uh, putting things together, and I keep having to add to the world of redstone with new circuit designs because someone found, okay, if you just move the torch over to the other side and you put redstone on the top, it saves you two blocks. Um, so overall, it's just this process of trying new things, seeing what other people have built, drawing out different optimizations. Uh, one overall technique, though, is a lot of people, when they start learning redstone, they'll build it flat because that's just sort of natural. It's almost like drawing on paper. But redstone is inherently three-dimensional. When you build things higher, lower, up, over, around, uh, you'll end up with a smaller uh, 
construction in the end. So you have to make sure you're taking advantage of that 3D nature of, of redstone. Um, well, I've actually found a way to make a these things on top of each other a lot more compact. It's when you have them going periodically, periodical order up, and you have a piston powering, uh, the, you know how pistons can power blocks on the other side? I use that concept, but when you have the piston that's powered block track, it doesn't power that block. So I've used that in the other order so that you only have to make it so that the sticky piston on the second row in the middle, you just have to make that one up and bring it down so that the other can go back to the middle floor. I just want to say really quick, uh, Minecraft Attic has a great channel that has like a billion different uh, door and block switcher designs, so I recommend that. Yeah, Minecraft Attic, you should be up here on stage too, he's awesome. Yeah, he's really good. <laughs> I love how um, Minecraft kind of leaps, like somebody will do something and then everybody else has a cool idea off of and it kind of leapfrogs from one idea to the next. If we called you guys the first generation of people who are kind of doing something, I'd like to hear what's something that you haven't been able to do, you can't do it yet, or if you don't want to answer that, like what would you challenge out to the crowd? Here's something I haven't been able to do. I would love to throw down the gauntlet and see. There's so many young kids in here. Yeah, no, what yeah. could you do? Well, me, for me, I've always been trying. And I think this is because of old pistons and the power of the pistons. But I've always tried to make a, a, I don't know, like a trap that's not detectable on the ground. And I tried doing it. It was a two by, it was like a two by thirty strip. And it was around my zombie fortress. And it was all not detectable, and I wanted the pistons to come down, and there was a lava moat underneath there. I never got it to work because the way the pistons power. Because I, when I did the, when I did the, excuse me, the three strikes and you're out, I had to hide everything under walls. So when the pistons, the pistons were like this. They came down and hid themselves under the walls here. But if it was grass, there would be no grass there, and it wouldn't. I just couldn't get it to work. I just sorry, I really. Sure. Well, I'd say um, the biggest challenge would be to make a player trap that is absolutely invisible. So that's that's that would be the best thing. So killing people if you don't see it coming, that's great. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's probably a lot of things. Uh, I, I, one thing I would like to see is 3D animations. People have done a lot of. Uh, a lot of you know screens with, with pixels. I figured out how to do it with color on that. That's pretty cool. But if you could do it in, in 3D, like right in front of you, it'd be pretty cool. But it's, I think it's really hard. I have one really tough challenge. This is the way of the expert into things. And Seth Wing and I were talking about this yesterday. Um, I developed instant wire, and, and you, you talked about this. If we're the first generation, so. Everything that I've made was built on someone else's design. Sure. Um, and then when I put out a video, other people build on top of it. Instant Wire is very much like that. I was one step in a long process. Uh, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll build it another way. For me, Minecraft itself, it, it almost sketches itself. I mean, if I want to say I'm going to reserve this area for a circuit, I'll put a row of blocks around here in corners to show where it is. It's almost that Minecraft itself. It's so easy to throw something in uh, that I, I really use Minecraft itself, so I don't sketch things out. I also don't sketch anything, uh, but being able to move more quickly in creative mode, I, I feel the same. It's get here pretty quickly, and if you make a mistake, just redo it. Actually, uh, I guess one, one thing to say about that is it. Uh, sometimes I do use mod or I use mods or. MC edit to move around components. So if I, if I try and build something and I figure out I haven't left enough space, I can move around the components that I need to, and that's really useful uh, for creating a service work. Now, you really don't need to draw your schematics unless it's something really big, like four drums, four chunks, wire. I, I, I don't think you need to. Uh, yeah, there, there's no need to write schematic. You just start laying redstone, and uh, eventually it works or it doesn't. Next <laughs> <laughs> uh, question. Uh, can someone 
please explain instant wire to me? Um, really quickly, instant wire is uh, a system that lets you transmit a signal from one place to another instantly. Normally, if you have redstone, it can only extend for 16 blocks. 15? Oh, I, I'm leaving the channel now. I got that wrong. If I can get that this time. Um, so, 15 blocks, and then a repeater, and then more, 15 more blocks. That will introduce a delay between the signal in the first section and the second section. Uh, it's a very small delay, it's a tunable delay, but it's a very small delay, but when you have something complicated like a computer or a video game, that delay adds up and makes your construction respond very slowly. Instant Wire uses a property of pistons that when they start out powered and then that power uh, is, uh, is lost, the piston retracts instantly. And if that piston, if that piston retracting breaks a circuit, then that circuit beyond the piston also uh, loses power instantly. Uh, and that's the basic instant wire. And then that's been developed into much more complicated systems. You can also use block update detectors to do the same kind of thing to transmit a signal instantly from one part of your world to another. Um, I just want to say something. Next question. Red shirt. Okay. Yeah. Let's start with so, um, I've seen videos like people that have pistons that build houses right under the floor, or like um, at home for the trailer for the ones that are already smart. And I was a little confused by like, underground wiring and repeating a um, circuit. I just want to go with that. Yeah. Oh, it's tight. Uh, I guess the question was, it's pretty general about uh, underground wiring and how you can get that to affect things above ground. Is that, is that right? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of it involves, uh, so using sticky pistons from underground, you can, you can push a block one, uh, up by one. Sometimes you can get it so that you can have a couple of sticky pistons in a row and they can push each other and retract all the wiring. It's pretty difficult for that. It's actually really hard to do wiring underground on, on like a completely flat surface that will affect blocks above ground. Um, but sometimes it is possible. Sometimes you just want some wiring underground that's going to control some minecart tracks or something. Um, and so, I, I mean, it's it works just like regular redstone, so I, I don't know that I have too much advice in particular to that, although one thing I will say is that it's when I when I do that stuff, often I will build the entire circuit above ground, lay a, lay a, a surface of blocks above it once I've finished the circuit so that I have a lot of open space to work with. And then once I've laid the, the surface, I'll move it down and sink it into the ground. Just kind of a useful way to, to build it. Next question. Uh, I'm at the moment building a digital clock with one of the newer piston designs, and you have to build for each um, display for that counts up. You have to build a giant um, piston memory cell thing. Is there any way to any good mod to copy that and then paste it over, so I don't have to build the same thing over and over again? No, I mean, are you on a server? Or no, this player? is single player. Single player. Is it? Yeah, just world edit. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of them. World edit and MC edit are two that I use. Uh, I think there are others, though. Yeah, but those those are those are great programs. Yeah. Uh, MC edit has a has a graphical interface and it's an outside programmer's uh, and world edit is a, is a mod that you use in Sony. Yeah, and those are indispensable for complex redstone projects. Cutting and pasting, rotating, moving things around, replacing block types, it's very help and handy. Huge type of thing. Uh, 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 I make stuff that I'm not a, like, a huge YouTuber. How do I get stuff that I make like out into the world so other people can see it? I can't get on this device. 
I have been known to uh, visit Reddit from time to time. Yeah, I mean, uh, posting it on, on places like Minecraft Forum or Reddit or Planet Minecraft is a great way to get noticed. Um, if, if the content is good, it will often get more attention because people will refresh the thread on Minecraft Forum or upload on Reddit or whatever. So um, there's actually a lot of great forums out there, and there's a lot of people. There's a, there's a, there's an astounding number of people in the Minecraft community who are just they don't they don't really play Minecraft. They just watch the videos and. So they're, they're looking for, for you to put up content. So um, there's a lot of people looking at that, and if you just post it in public forums and it's good stuff, then you'll get it. That's it. All right, next question. Uh, Rachel. I think I know what you're asking. So um, normally if you have, uh, you're asking about uh, a repeating circuit and the way you turn it on and off. Um, normally if you have uh, an odd number of inverters in a row, an inverter being uh, power going into a block with a torch on it, uh, you put five of those in a row, that's going to cycle. The, the whole thing is going to keep turning on and off in a loop around there. If you use a piston to pull out one of those, uh, it's going to break the circuit. And when, if you push it back in again, it will start working again. But that throws the redstone off, or the torch will pop off. Um, so if you have another power line coming into one of those blocks, and that power line is on steady, it's going to stop the clock, because the torch that's on that block will never uh, light up again. So you can turn a clock on and off that way. Uh, if you have a more specific question, um, I'm going to be here after this session. Uh, probably yeah, sure. Seth, Kirshar, Guy. Who, 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 who. Okay. So we'll all be here. So if people have specific questions about designs, feel free to ask us. Thanks, Coach. Have we ever made any custom labs? Mm, no. Well, I guess, I guess it depends what you mean by custom maps. I've made a ton of, uh, ton of just games, standalone games that, that uh, I've released for download. And it's basically, I, I, I make the game in my single player world, and I copy and paste it into, uh, into another world that I've just created, and I put it up, up, up in there to download. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, there's uh, my alpha world with uh, all the prototypes from my videos, and uh, you can download it on my channel page, and uh, it, it's 100% safe, there, there's nothing there. Yeah, I also have my entire single player rolled up for download, so it has all my prototypes. And for me, I have a particular Tavern Riders World of Redstone for learning Redstone. I also have a Tavern Riders World of Science, which has a bunch of things set up for investigating how things in Minecraft behave. It's very useful when an update comes around and you want to make sure they didn't change something. I also have a zombie fortress that's up to the with everything inside of it from automatic bar traps to trap doors, all kinds of stuff. So it's awesome. So I do, I guess I do that. It's really so, um, a while ago I was leaving down here, I was a lock, and once I went taking it, I realized all I had to get in was to put a fix and torch right on the door. So what was your biggest hope that was because why I haven't found this before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I have never done anything stupid. <laughs> I did exactly what you described. Both of my um, security systems or secure entry systems have a problem you just drop a torch. That's easy to get around, like an easy thing to design around, but I never would have known that. I've never thought of that until I posted it online. 
And when you say, this is secure, you're going to find out immediately how insecure it is. You can find every different way to get through that. Um, I really doubt there's a way to make out 100% secure. Uh, I think the best way to keep your, your stuff secure is to, it, it has to be hidden. That there is no other way. People must not know. In the zombie fortress with uh, three strikes that you're out, if you put a torch, there's three indicator lights that indicate how many tries you have. If you put a torch next to them, the door will open to torch you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. You have your hand to play back there with the camera? Yeah. Okay. Um, if there's one thing you could add, uh, if you ask Mojang, what would you want? Like, Where would you add that one? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know this has been a big debate in the Minecraft community for a long time, but what's your preference, lever or button? <laughs> button. Teeth and button and button. Yeah. 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 It depends on the situation. <laughs> there's, different, there's different uses for them. The problem with the lever is they have an on and off stage, and you, and you kind of have to remember which one is which. Um, but it's a different meaning to the user. This, is, this goes into my interest in usability of those designs. Um, there's a reason why there are light switches in the real world that have these two different states, and you can see those two different states, whereas push buttons, um, you don't see any particular state change. So it really depends on the application you make. I usually, I usually just put an indicator here. Let's be able to talk a lot. The reason why I like the T flip flop is the basically the multiple inputs to the output. So it's almost like controlling the switch in the house. I like for multiple switches in the house. I just like it. It's a lot easier. I agree with that. Uh, I know that you already covered this just a little bit, but can you explain to me just a very, very basic just to get like a circuit to repeat? Um, sure. To, so how to get a circuit to repeat in a cycle. Um, redstone, and then a block, and then a torch on the side of that block. Um, and then just those three in a row going in a circle. If you have an odd number of those going around, uh, it's an unstable circuit or instable circuit. And um, that power, that powered torch, will cycle around that entire construction. If there's an even number, you just end up with every other torch on, and it won't cycle. It has to be an odd number of those. That's the basic kind of thing. Um, you, you can also, uh, uh, recently, uh, a lot of people have been doing uh, just repeaters in circles, and you provide a short pulse of redstone power to that, and, and so you can control the timing of that very well. Uh, and in fact, in 1.0 now, those are, those are stable, and, and even if you log out and log back in, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll still work. So that was the biggest problem with the protective clock before. Now that works. So you can actually very precisely control the timing of your clock using repeaters, and it's a bit more compact. Next question. Um, what is, like, there's many different ways to use redstone for, like, gaming, traps, and stuff like that. Which one do you think is the most difficult to make? Like, which one is usually more? <coughs> the games that he makes probably? I was just like, wow! <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I actually, the, the redstone that's in my games, look at it, it's usually not that complicated. Uh, it's the, 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 the complexity from the game usually arises from uh, having that redstone interact with other game components. So I would, I would say that I think there's, there's a lot of creativity involved in figuring out how to make the redstone interact with, uh, with the other game components. Um, the, probably the most difficult thing it, it, uh, with redstone is, is getting Getting your circuit to fit into a tight space, it's, it can be very difficult to do that. It's, it's, a, it's a learned skill, and you have to really understand what's going on with redstone to, to be able to accomplish that. Um, 
the most complicated things for me, the most challenging are to get something elegant. There's, there's complex and then there's simple and there's something in between that's elegant where it does something complicated or really useful and you've got the design so that it's really easy to understand. Um, I have a, a, a single line switch here, just one power line connected to three buttons. It doesn't look like that would work, but that controls three intersections for a switch yard. And it's what I call elegant because you can see it, it looks so simple. There's nothing to add, there's nothing to take away. That is to me the most challenging thing of all in Redstone, to find that. Do a live demo. <laughs> Live demo? You, you want us to build one? I've got, I've got my laptop here. Uh, I was wondering if any of you had ever used any of the Redstone mods, like wireless or anything, to try to simplify some of your designs. Like I know the mini box mod turns each Redstone piece into a single pixel size that you can place on top, on top of other blocks, and then control complex things next to it. I've used the wireless first one, and I absolutely love it. I'm not going to lie. I did a video on it, and I thought it was really cool. to have this like, garage control that would just open my door and run up and be like, ah, oh, it's cool. I like that. I don't think it's going to be these ones. Can I try? Okay, we're going to try. All right, thank you. Um, what do you feel about the vertical that's done wrong? That's a lot of that. <laughs> so just don't get to use it. Way back there, watch it. Um, I was wondering if you um, ever thought there should be a vertical redstone uh, torch that uh, hangs upside down so you can have the currents going down instead of just up. You kind of already have that if you put a redstone torch on the side of the block. It will power a redstone that's below it. You know, it's, it's not great, but... Um, to be able to place a torch hanging down, it would be just slightly different. Wouldn't I don't think it would add anything major to the game. It's not something game-changing like pistons that really advance the game. Something like putting a torch that hangs down or wireless that's done, maybe that would have some good things. But overall, I, I don't think it would make that much of a change to the game when you can already do those things. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's, what's your favorite player trap? Oh, the uh, <laughs> the hallway trap because uh, it's nearly invisible and it gets you totally by surprise and just walking down and eventually level. Up. <laughs> the hallway trap with the uh, piston it, it pushes you in the, in the hall. Um, my favorite trap. <laughs> I'm particularly fond of cannon traps. If you download my uh, uh, minecart station 2.1 and you take the orange line, you'll, where it looks like it's going to do a U-turn, you actually go to a dead end and off in the distance a cannon has already launched TNT. And so when you get to the end, plop, TNT blows up right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I guess I, now that I think about it, um, I did a video recently about a proximity detector with Recruiter. Uh, and so there are actually, in single player, there's, there's some stuff you can do to, to detect players from 16 meters away. And so... Evil. Evil. It, it's, pre, it's pretty evil. Uh, <laughs> but you could, you could have a completely hidden trap with that. Uh, and and uh, so I guess that's probably the best one. That's what she did. They're like that. Where do you come up with ideas for games that make that's going to happen? I've played a few games in my time. <laughs> and I've also played Minecraft a bunch. Uh, really, when I come up with an idea for a game, it's because I have I've played around with Minecraft and I've seen certain mechanics and I see, oh, that's kind of like that's kind of like uh, a mechanic from this game, or, or, or something like that. Um, and so, I, 
sometimes I'll, I'll just look through a list of games that I've played and I'll say, wait, I could like, totally implement that with, with this mechanic from the game. And sometimes I see a mechanic from the game like, uh, I made a, a vertical TNT cairn, and then I was like, oh, you know what else has vertical explosions? Missile command. And so, it, I think having a really good knowledge of the game helps a lot with your ability to emulate other games. So, you really just kind of, if you immerse yourself in, in Minecraft, uh, stuff like that sort of just tends to pop out. Um, just one word, play. If you play in this world and try out different things, you'll discover great things and, and ideas will come. All right, let's see. Um, there's like a bunch of bugs with redstone. Um, which one would you think is like the most useful one? Because uh, Seth Blink, who brought so many detectors, he used like critical effects and fire and arrow. Like, which one do you think would be most helpful or useful? So, I, I personally consider block having detectors a bug. I think that if a piston's in the wrong state, it should theoretically correct itself. There are some practical limitations with the code, you know, the code and, uh, and performance that kind of limit that. I think I think they're technically a bug, uh, and ideally that they they wouldn't be a need. But I'm really glad they are because they have so many good uses. I also want to I want to give a shout out to Team Pilot, who's another uh, YouTuber who should be out here. Anytime I've ever talked to him about a bug, or anytime he's discovered a bug in the game, he has exploited it in ways that blow my mind. He found a way to make mine carts act like a submarine that would go underwater and keep moving indefinitely, not on rail tracks or anything like that. And just the way that he thinks about bugs and, and goes after them is amazing. Uh, anything that he's done with a bug is, is impressive in that way. So picking on any particular bug, I would say, Block update detectors. Sure. Um, do you have any tips for someone who wants to start making traps no prior experience? Just experiment. Just really just think like you know, come up with your concept of what you want to do. I don't know what your trap wants to be, if you want to blow somebody up or drop them on lava or whatever. I just really think hi. <laughs> um, so, and all I do is just really experiment, because that's what Redstone is about. And one of the things that I find with people who are on my comments and videos, they're like, how do you do this? I'm so afraid. Don't be afraid of Redstone. Redstone is a wonderful, wonderful system inside of Minecraft, and you can do so many things with it. So all I can say to you is just, you know, just experiment with things. That's all I can really say. Watch your shirts videos? Yeah, got to. Watch your shirts videos. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> um, well, I'd say experiment with it, and um, the process of making a redstone device is just problem solving one after another. You try to make something, it doesn't work, you try to find a solution, uh, you have the solution, you move to the next problem. Eventually, you have a nice machine. So we take a couple more questions. What was that? Is that Saiyan said to watch? Just now? Oh, oh, I was just saying watch Kirshar's videos. Because he has so many different traps. Okay. Black hat. Uh, do you know what piston you can push monster spawners? No. They can. Although, who knows what, who knows what they changed in one of, but... That would be awesome, though. I have, I have uh, Tavio World of Science, and in that I have an experiment set up with every single block type that existed at the time when I made it, uh, specifically to test that. So if you download that world and throw a lever, it will try to push all those little block types, and you can find out for yourself. Right. Let's see. We're sure tight end. Um, I was just wondering if you guys had any big products that you're working on right now that you might want to see over to. Uh, Zombie Fortress 2 is season 2 of my series. Um, but now I'm getting all of my uh, subscribers involved in it, so I'm taking ideas from my whole entire community. Just go over that and actually inviting them off and building it and helping them build it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm embarking on a big project right now. It's actually been going for a little while, but uh, I was 
Uh, I was uh, sort of taken away from Minecraft for a little while buying a house and moving to things. But um, I'm making the next version of Tag the Rider's World of Redstone. I'm making 2.0. Uh, it's big, it's grand, there's going to be more to it. Uh, it will be a resource for learning just about everything about Redstone. Um, and, and it's getting to be so big that I can't do it by myself. So I actually wanted to recruit people here, uh, anyone here who is interested in Redstone, interested in contributing to uh, something like this, helping people learn Redstone and investigate it, uh, send me a message on YouTube or Reddit um, or Twitter. I'm Tabby Ryder in all those places. Uh, I would really appreciate the help. I'm going to be setting up a multiplayer server, uh, having a place where we can all build this world together. I, I actually have some collaborations in the works right now. Um, I'm working with Lachlan on something. Uh, Fuego, another YouTuber, and uh, Disco. I'm working with both of them on, on some some pretty cool stuff. And uh, actually, I just want to say real quick, you, you talked, you asked about you know, big projects. I I, I want to. I don't. This, this wasn't explicitly asked me, but I want to say that um, actually in in my YouTube in my YouTube history, I've, I've been doing videos for about six months, and. Pretty much every time I release a video, I think to myself, well, crap, now I'm out of, now, now I'm out of ideas. <laughs> which, which might surprise some of you, but I, I, I don't have this big long list of things that I want to do. Uh, I move from project to project, and, and I think that, that might just be sort of unexpected. So if you don't have a big long list of ideas, don't let that trouble you, because you can, I mean, you can think of something and you can just do it. Well, right now, the biggest project I'm working on is a cell phone house. The problem is I can't get the roof to work. Uh, I've got no big project right now, but um, pretty much all my videos are done in one day. I just have an idea, I do it, I record it, that's it. <laughs> all right, everybody, we are on time. This is it.